the 121st division of the psalm, all eight verses. I ask that you would assist someone near you who's not found it yet. We'll also be on the screens to the right and to the left. And unless you're physically unable, we ask that you stand in the presence of the reading of God's word. Psalm 121. Are we all there? Amen. Reading from the word of the Lord. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee, there, oh, I apologize. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul together. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I sing. 
Cause I know He watches me. Let's pray. Eternal and almighty God, our Father, once again we bow in your presence, O oh God. We count it a privilege to be in the land of the living, God. We know that it's not anything that we have done to deserve all of your goodness, all of your blessings, O oh God, but out of your boundless love and endless mercy, you saw fit. Shower us with your favor once again and allow us to be in the land of the living. And now, Father, as I stand behind this sacred desk, oh God, I ask that you would move me out of the way, oh God, that you would empty me of myself, that I would stand as an empty vessel ready to be filled and used by your Holy Spirit. Have your will and have your way, oh God. Let your word go forth boldly this day. Father God, we just touch and agree right now on this prayer request that was placed into the, into the prayer bowl. Lord, uh, a mother praying for wisdom for a son's decision to be married. We pray for the spirit of discernment so he can make a wise decision. Oh God, we know that you hear and answer prayer. We know that you are sovereign and in control. And let your will be done, Lord, and your name glorified. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus' mighty name. For his sake we pray. Let all the people of God say amen and thank God. Amen. Once again, giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Pastor Hall in his absence, to Reverend Brown, and Eubanks is up with the teens, Dr. Bolden is away. I stand on the legacy of Pastor Preston and Pastor Cole and all of the other pastors that preceded him and shepherd in the flock at Morning Star Baptist Church over these 98 years, I count it a privilege to be here today. God is good all of the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. I invite you to go back into your Bible. We're going to get into this word, Psalm 121. I subtitled this Vicky song. <laughs> Sister Vicky, this is her favorite when she sings, All my help cometh from the Lord. Man, I can't hard to sit still when she sings that one. When you stop and think about the goodness of the Lord. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. With well, God's help this morning, I'd like to talk to you from the subject, look up for your hookup. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look up for your hookup. Hey, Amen. This is a great psalm, and uh, Psalm 121 is referred to as what we call an antiphonal psalm. And what all that means, that's a $2 word of meaning that it was sung as the children of Israel or any one of the Jewish persuasion was making their journey to Jerusalem back to observe the Passover or any of the other feast days that were celebrated in the city of Jerusalem, they traveled in 
packs or bunches or large groups, if you will, and the leader of that company would sing the first two verses, and then all those who followed along would sing back the following two verses. And then the leader would sing the next two verses, and then they would do the reprise by singing back. So as they were making their way towards Jerusalem, they were sending up a praise about, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. And they would sing back, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee would not slumber. I imagine that was a beautiful thing. Oh, that we would learn how to prepare ourselves as we make our journey and our pilgrimage out to the house of the Lord. If we would begin to sing the praises of scripture as we're making our way into his house. Because what you would be doing is sending praises up so that when you got there, the presence of the Lord would greet you at the door. How much more fervent would our worship be if we walked through those doors each time and got hit with the presence of the Lord instead of the presence of... So the theme of this great psalm is God's protection over his people. Let me say that again. The theme of this great psalm is God's protection over his people. The word keeps, or other words in this psalm that are translated in the original language, which means to watch over, are referred to six times in these eight verses here. But get this, in, this picture in your mind. Safety is something about which the pilgrims would be especially concerned as they journeyed on the roads through the hill country. Why? Because a pilgrim could stumble or hurt himself or someone may suffer sunstroke or the chill of the night camping out might result in coming down with a cold or a fever or flu or something because as they were journeying in those deserts, if you know anything about the area of Jerusalem, it's a desert area. It's a lot of mountains, a lot of rocks, and it is extremely hot during the day. But at night, it gets extremely cold. So if you are not dressed properly, you will succumb to the conditions of the weather, if you will. Amen? But keep that in mind. There's always the possibility of robbers as you're making this journey swooping down. Now, let me modernize that for a minute. As you're making your way to the house of the Lord to worship him, you always are susceptible to an attack from the enemy. Yeah, yeah you're susceptible to an attack from the enemy. And why would the devil want to bother you when you're on your way to worship God? We talked about this in VBS last week. He would not be attacking you if God was not about to bless you. See, he's trying to thwart something that God wants to work out in your life. He's trying to interfere with your blessing. He knows that God's about to exalt you. Therefore, he's going to try to throw one of them fiery darts at you. But I got good news. He's throwing fiery darts, but the Holy Ghost can throw a fire extinguisher. <laughs> But this message in this psalm applies to God's pilgrims also today. That's something that we can learn from this example because this psalm gives us great assurance. It gives us all the assurance as we journey on this pilgrimage called life. Because face it, life is going to take you through some twists and some turns. And sometimes they don't seem like this fair. It seems like I'm doing everything I can to live right for the Lord, but yet I'm catching more confusion in my life. Guess what? There's a big bounty on your head. Because God does extraordinary things through ordinary people when they submit themselves unto the Lord for his business, for his dealings. So there's some assurances in the scriptures that, that apply to us today. In the verse 1 and verse 2, the assurance is this, is that no matter what I face in life, my Father's creation is before me. Amen. No matter what I face in life, draw assurance from the fact that my Father, if your Father is in heaven, if we're talking about the God of heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my Father's creation is always before me. 
Now, some of the modern translations read this way. Instead of saying, I will lift up mine eyes, they say, I will lift mine eyes to the hill from whence cometh my help. And I got to wonder, why would they change that? Get a hold of this. Back in the Old Testament, a lot of the children of Israel made the mistake of getting caught up with the pagan nations that surrounded Israel. And they began to worship the idol gods of these pagan nations, and they would always make shrines or altars for these pagan gods up in the hills. They would go up into the mountains and worship these carved images. So what the writer of this psalm is saying about I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, in other words, it's, I'm going up in the hills. There's pagan idols there, but I'm going to lift up mine eyes above the pagans because I'm going to see my God's creation. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So he's saying I'm going to look over that mess and I'm going to look for the creator and all of this stuff. So Jehovah God is the creator of the heaven and the earth, and he is the God of power, a God of wisdom, and a God of glory. Therefore, we should have nothing to fear if we look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. So Satan and his demonic army may be at work opposing the saints. But do you realize this? Again, we hit this in VBS. He's operating on stolen authority. Stolen authority. Because that which the enemy tries to control and is influencing today was originally given to Adam. Adam forfeited all of that dominion when he fell, when he disobeyed God. And as a result of that, we've been on this trek, this pilgrimage, if you will, trying to get back to God when God's going to restore all things and return the dominion that after Adam forfeited through the fall. What a glorious day that's going to be. But you go back through the book of Genesis and read that account when God created everything. I mean, from nothing, just spoke into creation, made everything, and gave man dominion over that. To the point where whatever he made, he brought it before Adam and said, Adam, what will you call this? Adam said, that's a bird. Bird is what it was. What's that? That's a rabbit. Rabbit is what it was. What's that? That's a frog. Frog, that's what it is. That's dominion. That's power over everything that God created. God intended for man to have that. But when man failed, that dominion was forfeited. And now the devil has control. He is the prince of this world. But how many of my card players up in here? Now, when you play in your hand, a jack is referred to as a prince. But there's one card in that deck that'll whoop a jack. Y'all know what it is. It's called a king. Right? So we serve a king. Why are we succumbing to a prince? We're stepping down. We ought to be looking up. But he's never going to leave us alone because he's always trying to deter us from the blessing that God has prepared for his children. Every good deed that we attempt to do for the Lord, the devil is going to try to sabotage. I don't care what it is. Every blessing that God has for us, the devil will try to block. Even try to every breakthrough that God has for us, the devil will try to get us turned around or sidetracked or arguing amongst ourselves. In fighting, name calling, backbiting, backstabbing. Yeah, yeah. When we should have our focus on moving to the hills from whence cometh our help. And as we said earlier, know this, that the devil would not be attacking you if God wasn't about to bless you. So the hills, like we said before, they, 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 the Jews that got sidetracked, they were worshiping these pagan gods up in these hills. But we need to look for the God who's above the hills. Everything in the heavens and on earth bears witness to our great creator. Everything. So why should we fear? We should not be afraid. Psalm 27 gives us some great encouragement. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's the assurance that God wants for his children. 
Now we move to verse 3 and verse 4. Here's the next part is that my father's eyes are always upon me. Mm, that's good right there. My father's eyes are always upon me. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Do you know how good that is right there? Yeah. Now the word translated moved here means to slip and slide, to stagger or to be shaken. Now, how easy, if, you, if you're walking in that hilly terrain around Jerusalem, it would be to slip and fall and sprain an ankle or break an ankle walking on uneven rocky paths. Now, some of y'all know how that is. We walked out of your house in the wintertime, slipped on that ice and snow, sprained the ankle. I see a whole lot of people wearing those boots because they rocky road out there, right? But the Lord is concerned not only about our feet, He's also concerned about our walk. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just stay with me for a few minutes. He's not only concerned about your feet, he's concerned about your walk. As a footnote for you, Psalm 31, verse 8, Psalm 56, verse 13. I don't have time to go through all those verses right now. But this word keep means to guard and protect. And it's used three times in verses 3, 4, and 5. So God is, is concerned about our walk here because he's protecting us. Notice what he says. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He's not going to let your footing slip. All right. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have an occasional hiccup out here every once in a while. Don't be foolish. All of us get stuck on stupid sometime, and we end up in a place where God never intended for us to be because we were walking in our flesh and not walking by the Spirit. Amen? But... 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us that there is no temptation that has taken us except that which is common to man. But God is faithful that with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. So what he does is gives you a spiritual gut check before you're getting ready to do something stupid. And I've been there, done that, done a lot of dumb stuff. But before you get ready to do something stupid, God will check you. He'll say, you really want to go here? That's right. That's right. Do you really want to go there? That's it. That's it. And if you want to go there, you'll back off. And you know what he's doing when he backs off? He said, I'll be right here when you get through. And he'll wait on you. He'll wait on you, and then here you come. And he, I, I, I told you not to go there. Now, now, he could do that. But how many know that he looked past the fault and see your need? And we hit this in VBS. While he's punishing us, he's still blessing you. How you know? Because he didn't kill you. Because the Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But while we were stuck on stupid, he was still blessing us. So I got to borrow your word here for a minute, Brother Chris. Like he said, sometimes God would allow you to suffer in comfort. Y'all know how good that is right there. He turned around and bless you while he punishing you. <laughs> That's good. God is awesome. God is awesome. But watch this. He says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved, the be part. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Do you realize this? We sing that song sometimes. All night, all day, an angel watching over me, my Lord. We sing that. Do y'all know this? No, don't get on that. I ain't going to sing that. <laughs> uh, while you sleep, he's watching over you. Why? It says it right here. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. So while you sleep, the enemy could be creeping up on you with an attack. But since he doesn't sleep nor slumber, he's there with that spiritual fire extinguisher quenching darts that we don't even see. <laughs> Fighting battles for us. Going on in the spiritual realm that we can't even see. 
My mind goes to the, to the story of the great prophet Elisha. Had a young understudy from the school of the prophet. We hit this in Bible study a few weeks ago. And uh, they were being attacked by the nation of Assyria. Now, the Assyrians were fierce warriors. And they had a reputation of slaughtering and butchering every nation that they come in contact with. And now they were about to invade the children of Israel. And a young understudy came to Elisha and said, Master, we are surrounded. We are surrounded. The Assyrians are upon us. But the man of God said that they are more for us than that be against us. Now, what do you mean? As far as the eye can see, there were Assyrian soldiers with chariots and swords ready to wipe out Israel. And the only one you saw on this side was the man of God, Elisha, and his young understudy. But he said there's more for us than they are against us. And then he said to his young understudy, looked at him and cried out to heaven, said, Lord, open his eyes so he can see. And when that young man saw that spiritual vision, there were flaming chariots of fire all around them in the spirit. God had an army ready to defeat the Assyrians, but we couldn't even see it. So while we are sleeping at night, slobber running all out of our mouth, God has angels all around us with fiery swords and chariots and horses ready to take out any devil that come against us. So Father, open their eyes that they may see. Because they are more for us than they are against us. It don't make no difference about how many the enemy got on this side. God and you is the majority. Woo. My goodness. So he neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Lord promised to keep Jacob who became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he protected Jacob's descendants because the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to hear their cry. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Next point, verses 5 and 6. My father's presence is beside me. Wow. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Our keeper, our Father in heaven, is not only on the throne looking down on us, <laughs> but catch this, he is at our side to shield us from all harm. He's at our side to shield us from all harm. Now, catch this. This does not mean that obedient believers never find themselves in a situation of difficulty or danger. No, no. Or that they will never feel physical and emotional pain. No, 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 no. Watch this. This, this. this is crazy. The things that God permits to happen to us in his will, they may hurt us, but they don't harm us. This. They may hurt us, but they'll never harm us. Ooh, man. Oh, man, I think about that song, glad to be in the service, glad to be in the service one more time, didn't have to let me live, didn't have to let me live. Man, he should, we talk about the devil should have killed me. Man, God should have killed us. The instance we sinned against him, he should have killed us. But guess what? I'm still here. I made it. Another day journey. God kept me here. So the situations of life, they may hurt, but they won't harm me. Whew. You think about this for a minute. David had many experiences in his life that brought heartache to him, even threatened his life. But watch this. The Lord enabled those circumstances and all of those tragedies gave him the ability to pen beautiful psalms that we now use for inspiration. Come on. 
Come on, come on. Y'all know the story of David and Bathsheba, how he sinned and had a child born, had a husband killed, and the baby died, and then his household was turned upside down, then his own son was trying to kill him and took all of his wives and ran him off of the throne, and he out there hiding in caves from his own son. But then he could pen the words, create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Come on now. He let the situation, they hurt him! But they didn't harm him. Because God had already ordained that David was a man after his own heart. And though he stumbled and fell, he got up again. The Donnie McClurkin had that song a few years ago say, we fall down, but we get back up. With God's help, we get back up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down, but who got up. So God will allow these situations to sometimes hurt us, but they won't harm us. Why? Because all things work together for the good, for those who are the called according to God, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Guess what? We mess up. He'll work it all. He'll work it back in. He'll work it back in. He'll work it back in. When we do something stupid, he'll work it back in. He'll work it back in. When we hurt God to the core of his heart, if we genuinely repent, he'll work it back in. He'll work it back in. he create a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. What a mighty God we serve. Whoo! So the Lord at our right hand, watch this, provide, note, note what he said. He said, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy, what, shade upon thy right hand. The right hand is the hand that does work. The right hand is the place, it represents the place of honor. When Jesus went back to heaven after he rose from the dead, he said he's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the place of work, the place of honor. But he says, now that I'm the shade upon thy right hand, in order to have shade, you got to have a shadow. In order to have a shadow, you have to have a presence. Now, I believe one of these other psalms said this, that he who abide in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, my goodness. After all I've done, after all the mistakes I've made, that the Lord is the shade upon my right hand. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Make you want to holler. Yes. Marvin said, throw up both my hands when you think about how good he is. Yes. Think about from where he brought you. Yes. Not, not only that, think about where he met you where he could have left you. Then he got nerve enough to clean you up and, and use you for his glory. Come on here. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Now watch this. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. <laughs> So in writing about the sun and the moon, the psalmist was referring to several different things here. To begin with, in that part of the world, the burning sun is menacing. Now, some footnotes here of those of you taking notes. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, and Jonah chapter 4, verse 8. But as I mentioned earlier, at night, as scorching hot as that sun can be, there's a dramatic drop in temperature by night. So it's both uncomfortable and unhealthy, right? If you like warm covering. But watch this. Day and night, our Father is with us to shelter us from that which would harm us. Day and night. All day, all night, angels watching over me, my Lord. All day, <laughs> All night, angels watching over me. I said I wasn't going to sing, didn't I? <laughs> Man. 
let me move on. Let me move on. Now, the children of Israel follow what we refer to as a lunar calendar. Now, watch this. So the writer was referring to days, the sun, and months, the moon. Now, from day to day, from month to month, from season to season, from year to year, our Father is with us in the many challenges and changes of life that we face. Now, how many been in this journey with the Lord about 30 or 40 years? And he's still showing you new stuff. And he's showing you things that you never dreamed of. And guess what, man? A lot of times we thought if we had all the money we wanted, we would be happy, man. The psalmist says that thy tender mercy is better than life. After a while, man, money, you just want God's presence. Man, God, just give me your presence. Just let me know you're there because I know you're going to meet all my needs. He says, seek thee first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things that you want to be added unto your mouth. Lord, I just want your presence because you're not going to leave me lacking. But watch this. Isn't there something that there's a superstition that says that when it's a full moon that something's going to happen? <laughs> Some of y'all cousins get to acting crazy out there. We had to have a way of saying that it must have been a full moon last night. <laughs> and, and I'm guilty. I said that a few times. Every time I see a full moon, I look up there and say, oh, man, these jokers going to be crazy up in here tonight, boy. But it's superstition. The phases of the moon, now, it does impact water because it, it brings in high tide and low tide. There's a couple, when we went through Savannah, Georgia, there's a couple of, a one road that leads out to Tybee Beach. There's a little island that we go to out there, and uh, you can just see the swamp. When the water comes up during high tide, it, in, it covers the entire road. And I said, man, I wonder what they do out here when it's high tide and the road is gone, man. You just stuck out there. But it's superstition, man, for when it, when it plurs to people. So catch this, lunar calendar, remember? The English word lunatic comes from the Latin word luna, which means moon. And the word lunatic comes from a Greek word that means moonstruck. So I'm like, well, if it's superstition, moonstruck, moon bells, it, 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 it's something, man. It's, I don't know. Let me leave it alone. It's too deep for me, man. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is this, that whether it's day or night, whether it's hot or cold, whatever the changes may be, the Father's presence provides all that we need. Because he said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. So even though it's a full moon and the cousins might get crazy out there, guess what? They're not going to harm you. Right. You have that assurance. They're not going to harm you because God is watching over you. Amen? Ah. So the last point, and I'm done here, is that verses 7 and 8. My father's care is all around me. Verses 7 and 8. The Lord shall preserve thee from some evil, a little bit of evil, a piece of evil, all evil. Woo, you ought to shout right there, boy. <laughs> the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. So we need not fear life, death, today, tomorrow, time, nor eternity, for we are in the loving care of our Heavenly Father. All evil means that anything that could harm us, but in his grace, he turns it all into good things. What the world meant for evil, God will turn it around and make it for good. Now, I think about Joseph and his situation, that his brothers, man, that was cruel for them to sell him into slavery and go back and tell a lie to their father that a wild animal had eaten him and killed him. And they sold him into slavery. So Joseph had to endure the slander and the hatred of his brothers, right? And then he spent 13 years of separation from his father. Not only that, he had to endure the false accusation of his employer's wife when she tried to hit on him. And then on top of that, he had to spend years in prison. We hit this in VBS. Sometimes your gift will get you in trouble. 
Because God had given Joseph the ability to interpret dreams. And while he was in there locked up on hold down, there were two more prisoners who had dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams in prison. And he said, now, when you get out of here, tell the king about me. But you know how we do. Yeah, bro, I'll tell him all about you. Soon as that joker got out, he forgot all about Joseph. Joseph still locked up. They do it to you every time. <laughs> and all of this happened because of his brother's sins. It was a domino effect. But in the end, Joseph was able to say what you meant for evil. God meant it for good. See, because sometimes he got to take you through it in order for you to get to it. See, because if he gave it to you all at once, you wouldn't appreciate it. But when he brings you through the rough side of the mountain, I'm glad that illustration is right there. Man, when you get to the top, look out. Because when you're on the top, you're closer to God. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Ah. So Paul put it this way. All things work together for the good. Yeah. So this phrase, going out. In verse 8, and going in, refers to the daily activities of life. Yes, the Father is concerned about these little minute details in our lives. The littlest thing we do that we take for granted. You know how we get sometimes, we say, I don't want to bother God with this. But guess what? He's concerned about that. Because if you are his child, everything that pertains to you pertains to him. Because you you do know he placed you here for his, for his, his glory, right? You do know that he has a mission for you to do on earth. You do know that you are the representation of Christ on earth, right? So everything you do, he's concerned about. Yeah. But catch this. In Deuteronomy, let me read this quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9 says this. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the wayside, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. Thou shalt be as frontless between thy eyes. And here's the main verse. Thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon thy gates. Write the word of God. And I was talking to my wife about this. This tripped me out. I'll teach you a Hebrew word. Mezuzah. Everybody say mezuzah. 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 Now you're saying, what in the world is a mezuzah? No, it's not something Dr. Seuss made up. No. <laughs> a mezuzah, what it was, was a little metal box where the, a lot of the Orthodox Jews would write down scripture and place inside of this metal box, and then they would place it on the right doorposts of their home at the front door. And every time they went in the house or whenever they came out of the house, they touched the mezuzah. In other words, I want to take God's word with me when I'm going out and when I come back in, I want God's word to go with me when I come in. It's called a mezuzah. But guess what? Some of them took it so sacred that not only did they place the mezuzah at the front door of the house, they placed it on the right-hand post of every room and every door within the house so that you could go nowhere in the house without being the presence of the word of God. How many of us need to go back home and put some mezuzahs up in our house? So what a delight it is to know that as we go in and out of the house, to and fro in the city, and even fly from city to city or country to country, that the Father, number one, is with us, and he cares for our every need. Why? 1 Peter 5, verse 7, put it this way. Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And his love and care will go on forever and ever. And his word will guide you, will give you wise counsel, and afterwards will usher you in to glory in his presence. Wow. And I'll close with Psalm 73, verse 24, and it says this, My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Beloved, 
God's presence is all around us. And you can't escape it. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you go. You cannot escape the presence of God, nor can you escape the presence of God's word. David put it another way in one, in, in one psalm, Psalm 139. I'll just read a few verses in closing here. He says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast known my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my paths and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For lo, there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before. In other words, you have fenced me in, in front of me and behind me, and you have laid your hand upon me. Where shall I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness will cover me, even the night shall be light all around me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but catch this, the night shineth as day. The darkness and light are both alike unto thee. Why? Because he is the light of the world. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the friend that sticks closer than the brother. He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He is the author and finisher of my faith. And apart from him, I can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible.